The oil palm is a highly valued economic tree. Almost every part of it is useful to man. This underscores why the federal government, through the Nigerian Institute for Oil Palm Research, NIFOR, has given attention to research and innovations that would enhance the production of this cash crop. In tonight's episode of the program, we will showcase research breakthroughs made by NIFOR, which has enhanced the production of oil palm in Nigeria. I am Kauthar Anumba Halil, welcoming you to the program Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria. Please stay tuned. That will provide the necessary policy direction that will truly position agriculture as the mainstay of our economy. The federal government is removing obstacles and offering opportunities for self-employment, wealth creation and food security in the Nigeria's agricultural sector. Think farming, think agriculture. Watch Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria. The program kickstarts with news from the diary of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. In our lineup, Ministry of Agri rewards staff for excellent performance. Also, federal government empowers seed companies with potato vines. Details shortly. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development recently organized a reward and award ceremony in recognition of sub members of staff that have distinguished themselves in their various lines of duties. The occasion took place at the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria's auditorium in Mabushi area of Abuja. Speaking during the occasion, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mohamed Mahmoud Abubakar, stated that the efforts of staff have impacted positively in agricultural policy and program formulation. Abubakar therefore congratulated the awardees who distinguished themselves and urged them to do more. I will wish to congratulate all recipients of the awards today for their selfless and exemplary service to the nation. I am proud of you and do hope that this award will spur you to aspire for National Productivity Award. I also urge you to remain committed and dedicated to your duties. Also speaking during the ceremony, the permanent secretary of the ministry, Ernest Afolabi Omahihe, stated that the awards were given to members of staff that have distinguished themselves in punctuality, humility, dedication to duty, honesty, among other qualities. Omahihe said that the award is to motivate the staff to do more while adding that performance of staff in achieving the mandate of the ministry will be the criteria for the award. You should therefore know that henceforth the selection process of officers who distinguish themselves in the discharge of their duties will be based on, pillar, on the pillars of FC 25. As usual, this office has identified and selected officers who have demonstrated outstanding and steady performance across grade levels during the year under review. The objective is to recognize and grant award to the deserving officers for the good job and galvanize them for delivery of excellent quality and timely service towards achieving the mandate of the ministry. Directors in the ministry and the awardees applauded the minister and permanent secretary for the recognition, pledging to do more to actualize the mandate of the ministry. The federal government, in collaboration with the Green Economy Alternative Nigeria, and the Nasrallah state government has empowered 100 farmers with vines for the production of sweet potatoes in Nasrallah state. The representatives of stakeholders who were at the inauguration for the distribution of vines to seed companies expressed optimism that the sweet potato vines would increase potato production in Nigeria and improve farmers' livelihood. Director General Raw Material Research and Development Council Ibrahim Saini said that the orange flesh sweet potato has a lot of health benefits and contains vitamin A. Ibrahim urged governments and others to provide processing equipment for value addition and processing of the potatoes into different finished products. Did you know that the oil palm, like other agricultural crops, has improved seeds that can produce double what the unimproved seeds produce? 
In our next segment, Records of the FDA, we are showcasing improved seed of oil palm developed by the Nigerian Institute for Oil Palm Research, NIFOR, and the impact it has made in oil palm production in Nigeria. Keep watching. The Nigeria Institute for Oil Palm Research over the years has made a lot of research breakthroughs in oil palm plantation development. This begins from cross-pollination of oil palm to produce high-yielding seedlings for farmers. The process of improving the seeds of oil palm by the Nigeria Institute for Oil Palm Research begins in this oil palm research farm of the Institute. This is Pacifera May Session. If you see any palm like this, they are made palms. In other words, technically it's called Persifera. Persifera, where we collect pollen. This pollen, when we collect from here, from this palm now, we use it for cross pollination. That dura, which is the female, so that it will not be controlled, cross pollination. The collection of the pollen begins with the removal of the covers of the inflorescent and application of chemicals to control the unwanted organisms that may compromise the research results. It is then harvested after six to seven days. Once it open, the next nice thing to do, we will harvest it. We take it to the lab. We dust out the pony. When we take it to the lab, we touch out the pony. It will, we cannot use it like that. Now, when we dust out the pony, that's why it's wet. We can take it to the germinator or oven to dry. It's not under the sun. No, they are living because some of them are wet to dry it. After that, they dust it out. We, the next stage, we take it to lab for viability tests which is very important. It's like a human being, we call it like spent time, you go and test whether it's viable. We go take it to the lab, there are people there, officers there who study this thing. They bring the poly out. It's not it tells you, through the macro code, they tell the viability. A similar process carried out during pollen collection in the male field is also carried out in this field 54 of the institute where the female palms are prepared for cross-pollination. What we collect from May, that side, this is the pollen, this is the type of the pollen. This one has undergone uh, test, viability test, and we want to use it to pollinate this female, Idura. And when we do use it to pollinate this, it start developing. And then after six months, we get a kind of ripening. Within three weeks of preparing the female palm, the pollen collected from the male palm is applied on the female palm under a controlled environment through the use of the terrain bags and chemicals. After the cross-pollination of the female oil palm, the palm develops into ripe bunches of palm fruits within five to six months. It is then harvested to the seed lab. This is the seed lab where the improved palm fruits harvested from the research farms are processed into seedlings for farmers to plant. The palm fruits are stocked in these chambers for days for it to be easily processed with the aid of a machine. We move from that stage, when we soak them, now when they are stopped, 
the metal car soft with the seed. We bring them here, we put them here. Set the machine. It's not to crack it. What is the papa is doing is to remove the metal car we contain the oil so that we will get the seed, right? We separate it. That is the major function of this thing. So at the end of the day, if we set the machine working, we bring them up from here. From here, we package them back to wash it. After the washing of the fruits, it is dried in this store for 24 hours. So immediately we finish from that washing, they are expected to come down here, like what you are seeing now. We should dry them like this for 24 hours under room temperature, not under the sun. Uh, the purpose is to reduce moisture before they go straight to the store. So the following morning, we'll come and gather them, count them, put them inside our polythene bag. You will see them inside the store. After drying, the seeds are kept in this store under room temperature of 20 degrees centigrade before taken into the germination laboratory. Like I told you there, we package them like this. You can see the packaging now. We bring them to the seed store. Okay, at this stage, they are said to be dormant. They are said to be sleeping. So they will be here for like five to six months. At most, they will be here like this. If you look at them very well, a bag like this contains 500. And say we count there, contains 500. And a rack like this contains 10,000. You can see the information that they are carrying. You can see it, you can see the feed, you can see the month, you can see the year, the number of seed, and the name of the pollinator. Because all these things will go into record. But most importantly, they are said to be dormant as they are here. The germination process begins after six months of dormancy. This is the store where the germination starts. Like I said, we bring them right from the, the seed store where they are dormant to the germinator. At this place, we are expected to break dormancy. There are two treatments for seed to germinate or sprout. One is water treatment, the other one is heat treatment. Now we are in the heat treatment, which is the germinator. These seeds will be here for 80 days. 80 days, okay? Like I told you, they came according to seniority. So immediately they are here and I want to remove them from here now. We also remove them according to seniority, how they came. The temperature here is 39 to 40 degrees centigrade, plus or, or minus. You understand? 39 to 40 degrees centigrade. We have a heater. That is what produces the heat. It can never be above 40 degrees. You, you can hear that pam pam, that noise you are hearing now is regulating the heat. So, dormancy is said to be breaking here. Immediately there are 80 days, dormancy has broken. We are expected to remove them from here. The seed that the institute sells to farmers are of different stages depending on the farmer's demand. So this is the one that the farmer will, will buy. They will take it to their nursery and raise it to seedling. This is the nursery division of Nigeria Institute for Oil Palm Research. The head of the nursery division of oil palm gives tips for farmers who want to grow its palm seedling from pre-nursery level. Uh, in nursery division, before anyone can raise oil palm seedling to maturation level, there are factors that must be considered. You talk of having land that is available and the nature of the land must be stable. If you're having a graded land, it might not be convenient for you. The land must be accessible. You must also have a stable water. After you have got all those things I've mentioned, you talk of getting your polythene bag and other working tools. You talk of antrowel, your wheelbarrow, your spade, your hoe, and what have you. Once you have got them, once you have got them, you get your antrowel. Antrowel is of various sizes, but you must get the one that can fill it. Uh, the top soil into this bag. And the top soil in question two must be free of all those contamination. That's why we use sieving material to sieve the soil. Past sieving will feed the bag one after the other with the aid of antrowel into the polythene bag. The polythene bag is of various sizes, but majorly we use uh, six by nine or five by 10 gauge 
250. We feed them one after the other. We arrange them in beds. After we arrange them, allow it to settle for proper consolidation. Thereafter, we we'll collect the seed from seed production division. We will now plant them. The plumu and the radical, you must ensure that the pattern is fully differentiated. The plumu goes up, the radical goes down. Root, radical. You bow into the bag one after the other. For farmers who may not have the capacity to grow the palm at the pre-nursery stage, research scientists help them by growing the trees up until when farmers can plant directly in their farms. What other precautions do farmers need to take into consideration during planting? Before planting, we have flower called rock phosphate for root formation. When you dig the space where you want to plant the palm, you have to lighten the hole with the rock phosphate. It could be 500 grams, then you plant into it. After three months, the palm will have been stable. You get Roscoe fertilizer, MPK, MG. It could be 12, 12, 72, it could be 20, 10, 10. But soil tests must have been carried out. Many farmers are just planted, they, they won't do soil tests. You may not get good results. You do soil tests in your farm to know the deficiency of the macronutrient in the soil. If you have done the soil test, that will assist you to know the macronutrient needed by the palm. Then you will not just be beating about the bush. You can easily apply the right fertilizer. And within that space of two and a half years, you won't believe what you see in the farm. The good news is that a farmer who buys these seedlings and plants it will enjoy production after three years of planting. The production of this seed at early stage is seen in this palm plantation of the institute. At the, at the age of three years, you can have up to 18, over, more than 18, 18 bunches per year, between 18 to 20, 27 bunches per year at three years old. Then at at about uh, four years or five years old, you can also, that, that's a number of bunches will also be sustained up to about uh, six years. That 18, 18 bunches uh, will be sustained up to about, about uh, six years. It, was, it is after six years or seven years that you now see a decline in the number of bunches. But however, at the mature, at the maturity, at full maturity, you cannot have less than 12 bunches by pump per year. Nothing less than. So it's, it's from 12 to 14, 15 at maturity. Over the years, these research activities have led to a lot of breakthroughs in oil palm production. The executive director of the Nigeria Institute for Oil Palm Research discloses some of the breakthroughs in oil palm research. So we have been able to um, make some advances in genetically improving the oil palm varieties that we give to farmers, for instance. So now we have the uh, Tenara variety, which is a cross between the Dura and the Pisifera. And then we constantly also improve the genetic stock. That is, we also advance the lines with which you will breed. So we just don't stop at farm after one generation. You also improve the lines so that you can, in future, you all can also have improve, further improve on the, on, the, on the quality and also the yield capacity. Director of the Department of Oil Palm Research for Development sheds more light on the research outcome of the Institute in Oil Palm. In the area of breeding and selection, that is the planting material that we know, the seed that we give out, we have had what we call several points of uh, development. We have had the first circle, we have the second circle material which we released, then we are presently into the third circle. Now, what we mean by that is that we have a hybrid material called Tenera. That Tenera yields oil, much oil compared to the previous materials that we had. For Dr. Philip Oviasogi, oil palm plantation farming is a very lucrative business that anyone that has suitable land could venture into. The oil palm is a tree of life. It's a very good thing when you get into oil palm uh, farming. It's a tree crop. It may need some space. Once you have just an hectare, you are able to do maybe about 140 or 150 trees as your strength takes your, your source of income. But suffice it to say that just a tree 
you just have a tray of oil pan with contemporary pricing, you could get between 28 to 30,000 naira in a year on a tree after all expenses. So when you have, if you do that extrapolation by 150 trees, you know what it comes to. After all expenses, in a year you could get up to 300, 400,000 on an hectare. That is on oil. We have not talked about the kernel, the oil from the kernel. We have not talked about value addition in other parts of it, the bunches, even the empty bunches that you could turn into fertilizers, organic fertilizers. The research breakthrough has also been disseminated to farmers by the extension arm of the institute. I told you, we've been involved in outreach program where we encourage, we put farmers into groups we train them from time to time on what we do. We provide some inputs um, in terms of seedlings to some of them to encourage them to go into proper um, activities in relation or proper production activities in relation to our mandate crops. One of the challenges of the Institute is that some individuals engage in selling substandard seeds within the NIFO community and some farmers buy them instead of buying from the Institute. This negatively impacts on the farmer's yield. The Institute has therefore engaged in educating farmers on the right place to buy the Institute's seedlings. I go advise you, hmm? say, you see this seedling, eh? they're very important. Because once you don't miss them from the beginning, you don't miss the end, that's the end, be that. You understand? You know, say, when they start to the fruit, your money don't go, be that. Mm, okay. So I beg, make una they try. They make sure, say, all the seedlings will not they buy. Now straight from knife or not be by the gates. Inside knife or Akriu took further steps into the hinterlands to meet farmers who have bought seeds from the institute. Udia Ahi is an oil palm farmer in Ahi Obakoko village, shares his experience on how the oil palm plantation has transformed his life positively. Let us hear from him in our next segment, Farmers Speak. I only got my seedling from Nifo, uh, but in terms of the seedling, there are some seed challenges we face in, in the Sydney. And there are, uh, there, in, in, in there, one particular year, there is a Sydney that uh, I bought by myself. I bought someone from NIFO, so not direct from NIFO. For the environment, not from uh, NIFO Institutes, yes. That Sydney does not need, like the one that NIFO, by themselves, denoted to us. But I don't really know the cause of that. But the one that they did by themselves denoted to us through WAP, that CD is very, very okay. I always, first of all, appreciate God for his wisdom and his strength given to me to be able to achieve this business, this farm business. So he has really helped me and my family a lot. So it's just like, I can't even describe it. It just was someone that moved from step one to step ten. So you know what that means. So, uh -huh. so I will even use this medium to even encourage the youth out there. That family business is not what they look, maybe it's suffering, it's not suffering. Today, being who I am, is this, it's just this fan that you are seeing, so make me to be who I am. From all indications, there are opportunities to create wealth through farming old palm. You may have inherited an old plantation that is not producing wealth for you, why not try to replace the trees with hybrid varieties from NIFOR? The returns will be worth your while. And on that note, we draw the curtains on tonight's episode of the program. Keep a date with us, same time, same station, next week for another episode. Have a pleasant night. Rest. Mm -hmm.